All right, we're going to talk about long division and synthetic division today to divide two um, different polynomials. So we'll start with long division. We have 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus x plus 7 divided by x squared plus 1. We're going to want to use that long division when we're dividing by a quadratic or if we're dividing by a linear factor that has a coefficient. So to record, we put the x squared plus 1 on the outside here, and then we're going to put the 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus x plus 7 on the inside. And you want to try and keep that as lined up as possible. So we've got the third degree, the second degree, um, and the first degree, and then no x. If there was one missing, you can put a placeholder there so you can put the 0 um, x or 0x squared or 0, whichever one is missing. Now, in order to divide, we take this first term and divide it by our first term here. So 3x cubed divided by x squared is 3x. And again, I want to keep this as lined up and organized as possible. It avoids simple errors. I then take the 3x and I multiply it times my entire divisor here. So 3x times x squared gives me 3x cubed and 3x times 1 is 3x. Notice I skipped over that x squared. I want to keep them lined up so our like terms are next to each other. Now we're going to subtract that second row. 3x cubed minus 3x cubed is 0. They cancel out. If you've done it correctly, that's always going to cancel out. Then 4x squared minus nothing is 4x squared. And x minus 3x is negative 2x. Notice that we're subtracting that entire second row. So I like to put parentheses there to make sure that I remember. Then I can bring the 7 down and I start the process all over again. So there's a lot of repetitiveness of this part. We take this first term and divide it by our first term. So 4x squared divided by x squared is 4. I now then take that 4 and multiply it here and I get 4x squared times 4. 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0, so this goes away. Negative 2x minus nothing is negative 2x, and 7 minus 4 is 3. We would then start the process all over again. Now, negative 2x divided by x squared, you can't do. It doesn't divide evenly. So this right here is the remainder. So to write our answer, we write 3x plus 4, and then we take this remainder and add it on top and our divisor on the bottom. So 3x plus 4 plus negative 2x plus 3 over x squared plus 1 would be my answer. This is the correct way to put it, so you want to put your quotient on top of your divisor there. All right, we're going to try another one here x squared minus x plus 1 on the outside, x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 0x squared plus 2x minus 5. So I put that 0x squared there as a placeholder to make sure that I have a place that I can line stuff up and keep everything organized. I take my first term and I divide it by my first term here. So x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. So I line that up with my placeholder there. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply it times um, our divisor here to get the entire next row. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative x is negative x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. And I subtract the whole thing. Now x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is 0 negative 3x cubed minus a negative x cubed. Those two signs are going to cancel out, so I'm going to get a negative 2x cubed. And then 0x squared minus an x squared gives me a negative x squared, and I can bring down the next term. We start the process again. So negative 2x cubed divided by x squared is negative 2x. I multiply. And then we subtract the entire row. This first one cancels out. 
negative x squared minus 2x squared gives me a negative 3x squared. And 2x minus a negative 2x gives me a positive 4x. And then I can bring down the 5. I go ahead and divide again, so this process continues. Negative 3x squared divided by an x squared is negative 3. I take this and I multiply it to get the next row. And so that's going to give me a negative 3 times a negative x gives me a positive 3x. And a negative 3 times a 1 gives me a negative 3. We subtract again. 4x minus 3x is x. And negative 5 minus a negative 3 gives me a negative 2. And so our answer is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3 plus x minus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1. So we're putting that remainder over that divisor for the proper notation. So that was long division. Let's talk about synthetic division now. That's the one that we're going to want to do when we're dividing by a linear factor like this, or one without a coefficient. There's a diagram that shows it there, but we're going to go ahead and do one here together. So when we're dividing by a linear factor, we know that is x minus our root. And what we need for synthetic division is the root. So our root here would be 3. Notice that minus is part of um, the factored form. So the 3 is just the root. That's what's going to go in this top corner. Then we use the coefficients. And again, in order. So 2 is my coefficient of x squared. Negative 3 is my coefficient of x. And then negative 9 would be the coefficient of x to the 0 power. We drop the first term, and then we multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. So we're going to multiply this way. Then we add, and that gives us 3. And then we multiply again. 3 times 3 gives us a positive 9. Oh, sorry, that was a negative 9. And negative 9 plus 9. So the negative 9 plus the 9 is 0. So this would have a remainder of 0. Now in this first row here, we had an x squared, because that's what we divided by. Here we had an x squared divided by the x. So our next row, which is the answer row right here, would start with one less exponent. So 2 minus 1 would just be an x, so we get 2x plus 3. All right, so let's try another one of those from the beginning. We've got 5x cubed plus 8x squared minus x plus 6 divided by x plus 2. Again, what we need is the root, and so the root here would be negative 2, because that's what's going to make it 0 there. So negative 2 is what goes in the top corner, and then we use our coefficients. So 5, 8, negative 1, and 6. I do like to count my exponents down so that you can see 3, 2, 1, and 0. So we want to make sure that every single one of the exponents is accounted for after that first one, which is the x cubed. I drop my first term, so that's 5. I multiply negative 2 times 5 gives me negative 10. That's what gives me that second row. We add, that gives us negative 2. We multiply negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. You always multiply to get that second row and then add to get the third one. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. This has a remainder of 0. That's where the remainder would be. And then our answer is always one less on the exponent. So we had a cubic, so this is going to be a quadratic. We started here at the end, 5x squared minus 2x plus 3. Again, we go in order, so we've got the x squared, x to the first, and x to the zero. There's our answer. Didn't have much space there. All right, we'll try another one of those right here for b. We put a negative 3 in that top corner. We're going to use our coefficients. And we got to be really careful here because it starts with a 4. And then there is no x cubed. So I've got to have the 0 here. 
then negative 10, negative 2, and then 4. Again, I'm going to count those with the highest exponent. That was 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So I drop the 1. I multiply and then add up and down. I multiply and then add up and down. Multiply, add up and down, and multiply and add up and down. This right here would be our remainder. I start with one less, so that was x to the fourth. So this is my coefficient for x cubed, my coefficient for x squared, coefficient for x, and then my constant. And just like with long division, I put that one over x plus three. And there is my answer. We can use this as well when they give us a root. So they told us that the root is negative three. With the root being given, that's exactly what goes in the box. And then I use my coefficient. So one, zero for x squared, negative 19 for the x, and then negative 30. I drop my first one, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Now, because this is a factor, it was the root, then I know that the remainder is going to be zero. The factor theorem tells us that if the remainder is zero, then it is a factor of that equation. And we knew it was gonna be a factor because that was a root. And so we get x squared minus three x minus 10. So what does it mean if you end up with a remainder of zero? That that is a factor. Remainder of zero, it is a factor. If it's a remainder of anything else, it is not a factor. All right, so if it told us show that x plus three is a factor of the polynomial equation and use the result to factor the polynomial completely, list all the factors in the real solutions. So we can use this synthetic division to help us factor because we don't know how to factor x cubed minus 19 x minus 30 right now. But if I use this x plus three, to take it down to a quadratic, that is something you know how to factor. So I put my negative three. Of course, I'm gonna put my zero for x squared. We do not wanna forget that because everyone has to be accounted for here. x cubed, x squared, x, and then x to the zero power. We drop our first term, multiply, add, multiply, add, and multiply. So now what's left here is x squared minus 3x minus 10. That is something everyone knows how to factor. It's a quadratic. And so x times x gives us x squared. And we're looking for what multiplies to be negative 10 and adds to be negative 3, which is negative 5 and 2. Now to write the full factored form, I would have x minus five, x plus two, and I would have the x plus three. You don't wanna forget the one they gave us. This would be the full factor form. And then to find all of the zeros, remember this is always x minus your root, x minus your root, and so on. So my first root here is five. This second one would give me negative two because negative two plus two is zero. And then the last one we knew was negative three. So we've got our three roots right there. You can even do this twice like it has on this next one. It tells us show that x minus two and x plus three are factors of this and use the result to factor completely. So I can start with my two that they gave us for the first one and take this quartic down to a cubic. So I've got two, seven, negative four, negative 27 and negative 18. Four, three, two, one, zero. I drop the two, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Now I've taken it down, this is a cubic, but since they gave me another factor, or I have another root, I can do it again. I start with the same ones that I ended with, so I get two, 11, 18, and nine. I drop the first one, Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So now I've got 2x squared 
plus 5x plus 3. This is something that we can factor because again, we took it from the quartic to the cubic and then from the cubic to the quadratic, which is something you guys can factor. So for the full factor form here, and I'm running out of space, I would have x minus 2, x plus 3. And then I would have the other ones from this one, 2x plus 3 and x plus one. That would be the full factor form, all four factors that make up this quartic. And then for my zeros, we would have x equals two, x equals negative three, x equals negative three halves, because that's what's gonna make this one zero, and x equals negative one. 